Hey brother, uh, just dropped off the van, I'm on the way uh, to work now. Um, you mentioned uh, briefly in the last talk, like, um, you know, discerning the voice of the spirit and, and how uh, people are often like, oh, and, and, and the Lord spoke to me. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know that it's biblical, like you said, that you can, you can really know that in the moment. It just comes to my mind, the apostle, um, Paul, you know, when he was still Saul of Tarsus, uh, hearing the voice of the Lord said, who art thou? <laughs> uh, even, uh, there in in John 21 by the by the seashore uh, it says in verse uh, 12 13 14 something there um, you know no one no one dares to ask who art thou knowing it was the Lord but that wasn't until after that, that was hindsight I think in the moment it's it's really hard and that's why we're to discern and to try the spirits whether they are in need of God um, I think after the fact, we can look back and be like, wow, you know, I, you know, and, and be in the position of the disciples being like, you know, I don't even ask now. You know, given that, you know, you know, the, the, the birth of my two children, <laughs> you know, I don't even ask now if it was the Lord in that. You know, but in the moment, you're you're scared, you're frightened, you're concerned, you're wondering, like, where are you, Lord? What's going on? Like, it, it, is this you in this? Am I, you know, am I being attacked? What, am I hearing hearing voices? Is this my own flesh? Um, but after the fact, you, you know, oh, you know, you don't ask the question, is it the Lord? Because you recognize that he was there all along. So, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a very Pentecostal thing to be like, you know, I... You know, and then the Lord spoke to me. Go see this guy. Go talk to that guy. And, and uh, the Lord told me to take this this job. And like I, I don't know. I don't. I don't buy a lot of those things. You know, it, to me, it's more like you do you do your best to walk in the spirit, fumbling and bumbling through this life. And then in hindsight, you go, oh. You know, I could see God in, in all of this. And then you ultimately give him the glory. But that that's the thing you also don't see in these these testimonies is is like you, you were saying, like God getting the glory for any of it. You know, if it if it really was the the Lord that said, Go talk to this guy, I think when it was all said and done, you wouldn't say, you know, and I I went over here and got this guy saved. And I went over here and got this guy saved. And every guy that I go to gets saved. Um, you know, I've I've had some uh, some fantastic spirit-led moments. Even even doing door to door. There there was one time I I believe with confidence in Cincinnati that 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 ten ten souls received the gospel. And uh, every one of them, and the scenario that led up to it, I was just like, wow, the Lord was all over this. <laughs> but, you know, even right from the decision of what area to take. And, but, but when I was doing it, I, I wasn't like, God told me to take this location. I simply said, oh, I'll take the north because we're from Canada. <laughs> and I went on the north side of the road and, and uh, you know, shoot from the hip as, as, as it were, really. And, um, you know, I, the, the door opens and I say, hey, I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the dad looks at his, his, his three young ones and says, see? This is exactly what I was talking about. I was just telling you kids about John 3, 16. You listen to this man. Hey, hey. Yells in the back and says, 
Son one, son two, get up here. Listen to this man preach. <laughs> so we have a dad already already preparing his kids, like, like my, my John the Baptist, to hear what I was saying when I got to that door. And, uh, and you know, other scenarios that went on in that time. And, and I didn't, I don't ask now, was it the Lord? I, I know it was the Lord, but in the moment, I'm just, just being in the way the Lord leads me. And, uh, the way is, 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 is Christ. I often in my Bible, because I'm a word guy, when I see, uh, something like being in the way, I don't, I don't think of that always just in the primary context, like, He's on the way of his journey. He's doing. He's, he's he's on the way to such and such a place. I'll, I'll take the way and I'll, I'll underline that in in red, indicating you know Christ and His blood. Literally, the 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 uh, servant of Abraham was in the way. He was in Christ. He was in the Spirit. Yeah, he was on a journey to find a wife, but he was he was being spirit led. He was in the way. And uh, when you're in the way, the Lord leads you. When you're in the way, the way leads you. <laughs> and, uh, and and you can't but just, just give God the glory for that. So, um, yeah, these, these testimonies you hear... Uh, that, that's exactly what what they're they're void of, and I, I get the I get the language, but I think I think it goes too far. You know, Paul says, "I become all things to all men that I might all, by all means save some." So Paul's saying he's hoping that he will. I'm hoping that I will save some. Okay, but the apostle Paul's speech is also completely rich with glory to God, elevating God. You know, he's just constantly, you know, determining to know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And so when he says, I might save some, Paul's talking from a position of being fully in Christ. He is not saying that I, Saul of Tarsus, might save some people. I'm getting guys saved. Oh, no, no, no. And, and, that, and that goes back to that, um, that that brief talk about, you know, starting your day with praise to God and then organically um, seeking Him thereafter and growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, not as a method, but as as following a man. So the Apostle Paul starts with praise and glory to God and and uh, lifting him up and admitting that he, he can only do all things through Christ with which strengtheneth him. And, and if, if I might by all means save some, that's, that's a spirit-led man opening his spirit-led mouth and making a spirit-led comment. Could it be that that is the very words of God? that came out of his mouth, it's in my Bible, so yeah. That's God saying I might save some. That's the Apostle Paul saying, if by any means I might be fully submitted and committed to Christ and full of his spirit, and I and my will be set aside that I might be fully in the will of God, which says I want to save some. And that's where that 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 statement of I want to save some. I will save some comes from. It's not Paul saying I'm getting guys saved. It's the spirit of God in Paul saying I'm getting people saved. I want to. I I will get people saved. Right? You can make the same statement as the devil. I will be like the Most High. But what is the spirit in you that says that? Because a Christian can say, look, I will sit on high. I will ascend to the sides of the... I will be like the Most High. 
I can say that statement and not be in sin or in pride or in arrogancy. <clears throat> Why? Because I'm saying it as a Christian who is in Christ and where Christ sits, I sit. And where Christ goes, I go. And where I go, Christ goes. Because I'm in Him and him, and He's in me. So yeah, I will be like the Most High. Because the Most High doesn't dwell in temples, but He dwells in the temple that is my body. And that's, that's the same position by which somebody can claim, I will... I am getting people saved. <laughs> Without Christ, you can do nothing. And that's a hard lesson that some of these soul winners need to learn. I see it all the time in the comments section. He got me saved. Well, if that man got you saved, you're not saved. You're not saved. Apart from Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and faith in the work that He has done. Trusting the man, Jesus, and not some method brought to you by a professed Christian. <clears throat>